Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you some of the basic techniques for creating a procedural city like Cyberscape Pro. So let's add in a plane and make this a lot larger. Let's say this is 1500 meters big. Let's increase the clip end. Okay, and let's go right into the geometry nodes. Geometry nodes, new setup. Okay, so first of all we are going to create the roads. The technique I used is with subdivisions. So um, let's add in a subdivision, subdivide mesh node. And if we go to the viewport shading preview mode, we can see what this does. And now we get these lines and basically these lines are going to be our roads because we don't want them to be equally subdivided. We want to create a randomized effect. We use a separate geometry node and change this to face and let's add in a random value node set it to boolean and use this as the selection and what this does is select random faces so what we want to do now is add in a join geometry node and on this one we are going to join the selection and everything that is not selected and join it back together so we get our plane back but what you can do now is also add a subdivide mesh on the inverted one. And now we have these randomized um, subdivided faces. So the next thing we want to do is um, create these merging roads. So let's add in a merge by distance node. This basically just takes points on the grid and merges the vertices together. First of all, we want to apply the scale of the object. Now let's increase the merge um, distance. You can see what this does. Now we don't want to merge all of them and we can duplicate the random value node again and use it as a selection and select how many roads they are merging. Let's set it to 150, 200 the distance and yeah that should be fine. So the next thing we want to do is convert this to a to a curve. So let's add in a mesh to curve node. And now we can go into the shaded viewport and we can see our lines. So um, to add some rounded roads, we can add in a fillet curve node, set it to poly, and yeah, if you increase the radius, you can see what it, uh, it does. It bevels the edges. And we can increase the poly count and this gives us this, these rounded edges. Now we can see that we have some overlaying vertices. You can leave it like this if you want this kind of look for the roads. Or you can add in another merge by distance node. And it um, removes these kind of doubled edges if you don't want them. Let's make this a plane. Let's make the road actually thicker. So let's use a curve to mesh node and use a curve line as a profile. Put it in here and we want to set the Z value to zero and increase the X value and also in the minus direction. So minus 20 for both sides. So um, what we could also do is add in, just add in a value node and set it to 20 and use it for both inputs here, just with a vector math node and set on the x axis to minus one. And for the end here, we want it to be just one. So now we can control the thickness of the road with just a slider. You can also make it a little bit thicker, add in a extrude mesh node now we get some thickness on the roads. Um, now the mesh is set to shade smooth, um, which we don't want. So let's add in a set shade smooth node. Uncheck the shade smooth button. And that should be fine. And um, yeah, the, the way I created the buildings is just extruded the faces before they um, were converted to a 
curve. So we're going to take this output here and add in a extrude mesh. And yeah, now all of the faces are going to be pulled up. Um, we want to first insert them so they are a little bit further away from the road. So let's set the first um, extrude node to zero and add in a scale elements node. And we're going to use the top mask input from the extrude mesh into the selection of the scale elements. So what this basically does is insert the faces. And now we can use these inserted faces to extrude the mesh. So duplicate to extrude mesh again. And this time we're going to also take the top and put it into the selection of this last extrude node. And here we go, we got our buildings. Now we can use a random value node again to get some random mice height in the buildings. And we can also use a separate geometry node again and use the selection again so we only got the buildings. And now we can merge these two back together with a join geometry node. So merge the road with the buildings. And here we go. So um, what you could also do is take the, add in a subdivision. Subdivide mesh before the buildings and before the extrusion here. This will divide the blocks into um, more buildings. Um, you can either put it, place it before the extrude mesh, or you can um, place it after the scale elements. So either if you want these buildings to be next to each other, just with different heights, or no further apart from each other. So. Um, so we could go right into texturing, but I also want a little bit of this inserted roof shape on the buildings, tops. So um, we are just going to use the same method um, we used for inserting the faces here. So let's also use a extrude mesh again, node again, and we want the selection to be only the top faces, the uh, faces that are on the roof. So we're going to use a normal node. And if we take a separate XYZ node and put a normal into it and preview only the Z, we get this mask for only the top faces. So we can use this as a selection and now we can just use the same technique like back here and scale the inserted insert the faces if we go to the wireframe mode we can see that we have this inserted shape here and now we can use a extrude mesh again and now we get this inserted roof shape. Okay, let's um, let me show you how I textured this whole thing. So um, let's add in a set material node, create a new material, select it. Okay, let's go to the shader editor and rendered view let's set up a sky texture and turn on viewport denoising okay good so let's um i took these textures from textures.com you can get um, them for free 
and I just use these building um, photos. These real photos just seem to work the best um, instead of um, PBR materials because they are just real photos and they contain, contain all of the correct detail and everything. And um, let's apply this texture and I'm going to use object texture coordinates and a box project. And now the texture is, texture is way too small and I'm going to change the scaling type to texture and just increase the number. And now we can use this as the base color. Now we already get textures for the buildings. Um, but what I did to randomize this is add in a second building texture. and also use the same texture coordinates for it and set it to box project and i just used a um, geometry node and the, in the geometry node the random per island output gives us this random face um, just a random color, uh, random value for every face. So we can use a color ramp with a set to constant. And this gives us a mask of all of the buildings, random faces. So what we can do is add in a mix color node, mix these two textures together and just use the random per island as a factor and now the buildings get these different textures randomly so the last thing um, I'm going to show you is how I created textures for the roofs so I used the geometry node again and also used a separate X, XYZ node and got this mask for only the tab top um, faces and now we can just duplicate our principal shader and mix the two shaders and use the normal mask for the top faces as the factor. And to this principal BSDF shader we can just apply a concrete texture. also set it to box project scale it up now obviously there's these are just the basic techniques I use for cyberscape pro I added a bunch of stuff to it to the actual um, product and this is what the shader for it looked like. So you can see I mixed a bunch of different textures and also added some window lights and everything. So subscribe to the channel and check out the links to Cyberscape Pro. If you need a photorealistic and procedurally generated customizable city for your own projects.